Hey, I'm Shy Fox, and today we are going to be drawing a cute polar bear wearing a winter scarf. I'm going to take you through this tutorial step by step so that you can follow along and draw this too, no matter your skill level. I'm going to be using Clip Studio Paint, but if you use a different art program, that's fine as well. Lots of the tools that I'm using are basic and most programs will have them. If you've never made digital art before, you can check out my playlist with videos of what you'll need to know before getting started in digital art. Any other videos or links mentioned during this video will be in the description so that you can go back and check them at your own convenience. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials like this one and more digital art tutorials in general. I've got lots to teach so that you can improve your digital art skills. You can pause the video at any time to catch up and you can also use hashtag draw with shyfox on Instagram if you want to share your work when you're done. I'll see it there and so will the community and speaking of community we have a discord that you can join and share your art there and chat with other artists. Alright, to get started we are going to need to create a new canvas for our polar bear. So go file, new, and then you're going to get your canvas window and we are going to do 3000 by 3000, just make it a square. And 300 resolution is fine and I'm going to make sure my record time lapse is clicked and just for the record uh, 3000 by 3000 is pixel units. Uh, so you can see your units over here. So record time lapse is on and I'm going to click OK. All right, we have our canvas and you can see that we've got our first layer over here and we want to pick a dark blue uh, to do our sketching and I'm going to grab a pencil. So over in our pencil tool uh, option here, we have a bunch of different pencils we can pick. I'm going to pick the design pencil and I'm going to get started by drawing the head shape and you can just go ahead and draw a circle. I just kind of lightly rough in that circle and this just gives me a nice little guide of how to get started. We're going to do some erasing of some of our sketching so every line that you put down is not permanent. That's the beauty of sketching and from my circle I'm actually going to bring uh, the, the bottom sort of corners wider. These are kind of like the, the little cheeks of our polar bear and I'm going to actually press a little harder where I'm feeling more confident that I want to keep some of these lines. So I think of sketching as kind of a process of like uncovering your drawing, like finding your drawing somewhere in the page. It's kind of like in sculpting where you pull away clay. Sometimes it feels like that because I'm like sketching and finding where I want the lines to go. So I sometimes erase, often we erase and we look for where we want the lines to actually be. So I'm kind of liking that shape. And then the top of the head is just rounded and that's it. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space for some ears and I want our ears to be not too small. About that size, just round. I kind of want them to sort of start, I'm trying to draw a horizontal line, sort of start at the same point and sort of end at the same point on the head, kind of like that. So just kind of eyeball that, kind of eyeballing it here and just trying to make them look somewhat symmetrical. They don't have to look perfectly symmetrical and that's kind of just the the beauty of sketching uh, something like this is it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. So I'm going to draw the inner ears. Go ahead and do that. I don't see anything wrong with drawing in this case for kind of a cartoony style. Um, uh, quite a bit of the face before we even move on to the body. I don't think that's too big of a deal. So now we can go ahead and add in some eyes and nose. I'm going to do kind of, it's kind of like a slanted oval. Like if an oval was vertical, it'd be like this. And I've kind of slanted it. So in this case, 
uh, we're gonna have our eyes slanting towards the towards a forehead I guess you could think of it like that so I'm gonna have one on each side the catch with this is gonna be trying to make them at the same height again uh, so if you think of maybe where the middle of the face is that would be a good place to position the eyes and to me they're not quite looking like the same shape and not quite the same height on the face so I'm just gonna work on mine to get them more similar eyes are important to take your time on because if the eyes become wonky it makes the whole drawing kind of feel a little off and wonky I'm just gonna I, I like to take a brush and just kind of like paint these in a little bit these are just gonna be solidly painted anyway later when we get to that point these are starting to look more similar and again this is just a sketch it's important to get your sketch looking as, as um, good as you can but it's not gonna be the end of the world if it's not perfect so no need to try and like perfect but just get it to a point where it's like I can envision where I'm going with this and now I'm actually just erasing in these highlights I'm just taking an eraser and just erasing to major highlights and then to kind of minor ones and that's all we're gonna do for our sketch we'll do more fancy things with eyes when we actually get to the coloring piece uh, of the whole thing let's add a nose the nose should be kind of oval like and wide that's all we want with that and then we'll do a little three shape or W shape is probably the better way to explain this W shape mouth just below the nose and there should be some decent space between the uh, bottom of the mouth and the chin if not that's okay if you're drawing this in a way you can select and pick it up and move it around that's always a useful tip I often find myself doing that if you don't know how to do that find your lasso tool select the part you want to select and then once you've selected it you can find the edit transform and then there's things like um, scale rotate distort um, free transforms probably the one to go with and then there's settings like mode where you can change these again but free transforms are uh, usually pretty useful because then you can like skew it. I use that too. So if that's going to help you better position your features or maybe your features are like too small or too big and you want to change them. So now's a good time to fix them up. And just because it's cute, I'm going to add a little bit of hair. I guess fur. This is a polar bear. Fur? little pieces of fur kind of at the top of the head I think that looks cute for the scarf just below the bear's head we are going to do kind of a shape that follows the chin line so it kind of bumps out like that on one side bumps out like that and we kind of have curvy corners as it goes around and instead of it just flat on these sides we're actually going to have it go in like that and out to give a sense of like fabric so on this side we'll do it again just follow the line in and then to connect it you're just doing that so it might help to then erase the line that we don't need so it just kind of does a wobble, a little wobble and lines going in like fabric, like so. And we are going to add shape like that for the scarf sticking out on the one side and a little one here kind of overlapping a bit. And then we're going to want four or five of these on each of our tips of the scarf little rounded cornered rectangles is the way I think of those I've gone with four and I'm gonna do some stripes on mine so I slightly curve and slightly curve the ones that are to the right 
are going to curve this way and the ones to the left will curve this way as they go around. That's just kind of being a little bit realistic. Kind of space them apart evenly and then where it kind of bumps, uh, we're going to just follow that same shape as well. And then these can round this way and I'm just going to erase this line that's in the way. Just kind of round downward like that. Scarf part is done. Let's add a body and you can think of similar shape to how it was square but rounded at the bottom of the bear's face. We're going to kind of do that square rounded shape at the bottom for the bear's body. Think of like a jupe jupe. <laughs> So do that and then if it helps you can draw little circles on either side of the bear polar bear here for the feet and I am just going to darken that and then kind of connect that alongside the bottom of the bear. And then I can kind of erase some of these inside lines because it starts looking kind of messy and I, I don't want to get too confused. And then if it's not looking that symmetrical, do what you can to sort of fix it up. Doesn't need to be perfect, but it will help if they look somewhat symmetrical in a pose like this. Great. Now I'm going to add little paw, paw pads to the feet on either side. Big one and then three little toes in this case. And then I think we just need some arms. I guess they're still legs. It's a four legged animal. So kind of jube jube shaped again, where it kind of gets wider at the base and thinner, but it arts is kind of going to disappear. The lines just kind of disappear and aiming for that somewhat symmetrical look. Doesn't have to be perfect fix it up till it looks decent. And I'm going to just add little lines like that. One, two. So it kind of looks like he has one, two, three little, little toes. And I'm just kind of darkening and sketching till it looks kind of the way I like. And I'm going to darken the sides so that looks the way I want it. All right, so the actual sketch of our little polar bear is done here. The next step to make this more of a finished digital art piece is gonna be to do the lining phase. Now, to do the lining phase, it's really helpful to turn down the opacity of our sketch layer. I did my sketch all on one layer. If you did yours on multiple layers, now's a good time to merge them. So I'm going to turn down that opacity to 25% or so and I'm just going to make sure my polar bear is in the middle of the page, the canvas, and that's pretty much the middle. And I'm going to add a vector layer. Clip Studio Paint has vector layers. If you're not drawing in Clip Studio Paint, then, uh, you know, don't worry about vector too much. But if you are in Clip Studio Paint, vector layers are just really useful. So find yourself the G pen. G pen or some other pen or any, I guess any brush can, can work for a pen. So find one you like and find a sort of a thickness you like. I'm going to do not too thick, but something that looks kind of that like that. And I'm just going to go around and line the whole thing. If you're having trouble with lining, I've done quite a few tutorials on line art. So I will make a playlist uh, and, and put it in the top right corner specifically on line art so that you can get some help with that. And this will be Clip Studio Paint help specifically. Because line art's not easy. Getting those stable, clean lines as we call them.
And because these are vector, I have the ability to kind of pick them up and move them around using the object tool. And if that's, that's kind of beyond exactly what I'm teaching here. So you might just have to redraw your lines or visit some of my tutorials teaching more on line art. Don't worry if you're not going as fast as me at your line art. It takes a lot of practice to get quite a bit faster at the whole line art thing. I'm just going to use my vector erase for erasing anything that's kind of overlapping and zoom in so I can see. There we go. I think for the stripes, I will just kind of draw those in as part of the coloring, like not line it in other words. I'm actually going to create a separate layer, separate vector, vector layer for the eyes. And I'll use, um, I'll use a separate layer for the nose as well. So that makes three, three vector layers total. And I'm just going to go ahead and color in completely the nose with black. Now's a good time if you're done your lining to fix any of the lines that don't look quite right. I'm going to try and do that. And with the eyes, I'm going to fill them in as well. Now at this point, we can actually delete or turn off our sketch layer. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to create a folder and put all of my line art layers inside of it. And I'm going to have them in this particular order that I think is best. And I'm going to set my folder to set as reference layer. So the little lighthouse button here, that's going to make our coloring job much easier. And we're going to start that coloring job right now. Let's create a new folder that is underneath our line art folder. And for simplicity, maybe I'm going to assign the line art folder to red and the coloring folder to orange so you can kind of see that and I can while I'm working it just feels easier to look at create a new raster layer or just regular paper layer raster layer is what they're called new layer inside your coloring folder and it is inside of that and you can find an off-white I'm not going to use straight white you could but I'm just going to do a slightly off-white uh, into the yellows I guess think of like a creamy color and I'm gonna take my fill bucket tool and with your fill bucket tool just make sure you have um, this set 
the reference layer as um, checked off and set here. And uh, you may need to mess with your close gap settings and your tolerance, but if you don't know how to do this part, don't worry too much about it. You can just color the way you usually color things in. Okay, and I've clicked inside of that and I'm gonna just make a couple new, uh, a new layer, I guess, for each sort of color that I'm choosing. So I'm actually gonna use black. Am I gonna use black? I'm having second thoughts. What color do I wanna use here? I'm gonna use, mm -mm -mm. yeah, I'm gonna use black for the inside of the ears and the toes. We can always change this and you, of course, are free to choose a different color. And I'm going to make the scarf a blue color. And I'm just gonna fill those all in and same with the ends and you're probably wondering about the stripes i'm going to make a new layer and clip it this is the clip to layer below button clip it to the blue scarf layer and i'm just going to find a lighter blue and i know i'm not using my sketch here i'm kind of okay with that and i'm using a pen tool just the G pen is fine. Don't worry about the numbers that I've got with my G pen. And I'm just using the pen tool. And you might want to refer to your sketch to see how you did this, how you were planning to do this part. And there might be some touching of the layer below. So, or the uh, parts of the scarves below, like these kind of overlap together. So just watch for that. And I'm just gonna be strategic about it in the way that I color. And same thing here. That's all I'm gonna do. Nothing too crazy. Make sure that makes sense the way, <laughs> the way I'm coloring this. Just fix that. Perfect. So now we have the base flat colors. I think we will give life to our bear our polar bear and give some coloring and things to the eyes so find your eyes layer and above it create a new regular layer and clip it find white and we're kind of putting back in those highlights that we sketched big ones Oop. big ones first And then do your little ones next to it. Okay, and I'm gonna click back on the eyes layer and click new layer. Because the one above it was clipped, this one's automatically clipped, but basically we just have a clip layer bef below the, the white of the eyes, the white highlight. And I'm gonna find a brownish color and do a little bubble right about here. And that's just going to go underneath. And I feel like we're going to want to turn down the opacity on this. So slide that down just to lighten that up. I guess darken it technically. Lighten the effect of the <laughs> brown of the eyes. And I'm going to do a new layer above all of that and clip it. So now we have a third clipped layer to the group. And I'm actually going to use a layer mode so where it says normal. I'm going to pick glow, uh, what am I doing? Add glow. Add glow and I'm going to find a warm goldy color. I'm going to choose my airbrush. So just choose airbrush and soft. Don't worry about the numbers, just soft. And then just at the bottom, just kind of lightly light and it should go from dark to light so lightest part should be at the bottom and if that's too much maybe the opacity slider is applicable again so i'm gonna slide mine to there and you can even try different colors maybe you don't want to use gold instead of brown and gold you're gonna use like purple and pink or something might be fun that's looking good so for our nose just add a little life to it uh, our nose layer and mouth layer are together I'm going to make a new layer, clip it on, 
and I'm gonna find just a gray and I find this works really well with a, a brush just find a brush and just kind of swipe you might need to use an even lighter gray and I just do a little swipe and it kind of gives this like realistic nose effect just on the upper part of the nose nice very nice next job we should give some shadows to our polar bears fur find your polar bear fur layer mine is all the way down here add a new layer above it and clip it on and find a purple find purple seems crazy but there is a master plan here go to the multiply So clipped layer is now layer mode multiply. And I am gonna just go around the bottom of the face. Now you can see that is definitely purple. And the fun part now, so we can see how we actually want that to look. I'm just kind of fixing that. Um, is we're gonna pull the slider down. The opacity slider. So I think I want it about there. I can always change my mind and turn that up and down depending and I'm just gonna add in shadows where I think they should go in this case I'm actually gonna do it's gonna go around I have like basically a shadow that goes all around way around the shape of the face that's the way I'm doing it here and it might take a bit of work to kind of fix the shaping of your shadows so I'm just kind of doing that and I'm gonna do one there kind of oval shaped and the key to this is to make sure the nose is at the top of this shadow so there shouldn't be a ton of space between where the nose is and the top of the shadow so just kind of like that and I'm looking at it and thinking, yep, yeah, I just need to lighten this a bit more. Opacity on the slider. I don't want it to be too intense because it is purple. And we may have to tone down the saturation of this purple and use like a grayer purple instead of this like super ultra saturated purple for this. Might have to do that. We'll see how things go. And that's the beauty of this whole thing. We can change our minds. So I'm going to go in and add some more shadows. I'd like to do some in there. I'm going to do some on the bottom of the paws. Kind of following the shape of the paws there. And I'm actually going to go back and kind of erase to smooth that out. Sometimes going like reverse coloring, I think of it, where you just use like erasing to get the shapes that you need is a strategy and it can be useful and I'm gonna do it again here as I try and get these shapes figured out just like that erasing I'm gonna erase there too and we should do a shadow that is sort of just around the base of the, the foot and that kind of blocks in from where the arm is upward and just beneath the scarf I'm going to do a little shadow there and following underneath the scarf a whole shadow there just all the way along and on this side we're going to follow the bottom of the foot and we're going to have this little round shape like a U here to kind of block it off and section that in and I don't know if I explained this part very well, but I did rounded kind of shapes connecting the ear shadows to the head shadows. So I'm going to increase my opacity just so you can really see where these shadows ended up. Take a good look. Pause the video if you need to. And let's carry on. So I'm going to put that back down there. To, to that and I'm looking at my creamy uh, white fur 
back at this layer. And I'm thinking it would be really nice to use the lock transparent pixels button. You can find that here, checker with a lock and find white. And I'm gonna find my airbrush and I'm gonna kind of just airbrush over the middle of the face, the middle of the arms and see how that looks. I think I like that. Our scarf needs some shadows. So we're gonna do similar to what we did with the fur. New layer above the clipped layer of the uh, stripes that we had. Clip that on as well. And we're gonna do again a multiply. I'm gonna pick the same purple or similar purple and go along the few places. So I'll actually do this whole part uh, completely opaque and then I'll turn down that opacity slider. So you can see where I'm adding my shadows. And I'm gonna even do this side and you can even do like something like that. Kind of a little bit of an abstract shape kind of showing tension along the center of the scarf giving that sense of fabric little little shadow there does it look good to have a shadow there maybe a really thin one we can get away with that looks good kind of something thin and that's all i'm gonna do and i'm gonna turn this opacity slider down to about there that looks nice and we have one more kind of major step here and that is going to be find your original line layer with all the majority of your lines create a new layer clip it on and i'm going to pick a purpley blue fairly dark purpley blue i'm going to take the pen tool and uh what i think will be really nice is if we color in all the inner lines this color not to be confused with anything that touches the outside of the canvas so the where the canvas meets the transparency of the canvas meets our polar bear though that's gonna stay black so that might be a little confusing at first but uh, you can sort of see how I'm doing it. So basically what it's going to be is our whole polar bear, except for the, not that part, the paws and stuff, how I've done that. There is some messiness to my <laughs> drawing. Maybe yours will be a little bit nicer than mine, cleaner than mine. But yeah, the, there's going to be a black border basically around our whole polar bear. And I'm just kind of making all the inner lines. This is just like a style choice. You can leave yours your lines all black if you want to but this is kind of an experiment we're gonna try this out see how it looks leave those paw pads alone and the bottom of the face the mouth I'm gonna leave alone too I did put that on its own layer and the insides of the ears on the polar bear I'm gonna leave alone yeah I'm gonna do that so that doesn't leave a whole lot left to fix. For experimentation purposes, I actually really would like to see what it looks like with the mouth kind of colored in this color. Yeah, it looks weird. So scrap that idea, unless you like it. All right, and then one final thing I think that would look nice uh, besides adding a background would just be a nice little shadow for our bear so he's not kind of like floating in space so if you create a new layer and uh, that can go underneath uh, the very bottom of your coloring folder and you can take just like a light blue or, or light gray or something and just draw in a bit of an oval you could even use one of the oval creating tools if that's better for you and just kind of position that where you want and also you can go ahead and make a background for your bear maybe add some snow 
snow falling in the sky, some ice. I'm going to do that right now. That's not going to be part of the tutorial because that'll make it really long, but you can copy my background too if you like. Now, also, if you'd like to share the art that you've done today with us on Instagram, you can do hashtag draw uh, with shy fox, two X's, and I'll see it and I'll like it. I might even post it on my story. And there's a lot more tutorials coming of this type. And hopefully by the time you see this video, there will already be lots of those videos. So if you want to check out more digital art draw along tutorials and Clip Studio Paint by me, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you had fun with this. And I'm looking forward to seeing your guys' creations and maybe chatting with you in Discord. Here is my finished version with the background and I should mention that I wanted to add blush to the cheeks and did so after the fact. It looks cute so you may want to go ahead and add it to yours as well. Thanks for drawing along, hoping to see you in another video. Have a good one!